best part and the most challenging part of your job? The best part is seeing artists, producers, writers, whoever, creative people, to believe in them and to see that moment when they get it. You can't buy it. It's worth more than a million dollars. You see it. Um, I never worked with J. Cole, right? We was on tour with K. Michelle. We were in Boulder, Colorado, 2010, all 11, I don't know. And I was a BT tour. And I remember being in Boulder. J. Cole had the mixtapes. He was under Jay-Z. He was real level-headed about being on Rock Nation and, you know, being able to talk to Jay on the phone or whatever. And he had shared with me he was a little frustrated that, you know, he thought his album was right and Jay still felt like he needed singles. But he had released this mixtape. I forgot the name of it. I should be shocked for not knowing that name, too. Probably was the second mixtape. I remember it shut down the internet. And I remember seeing overnight going from one city, the city before uh, Boulder, to that city, and I saw him go out and perform, and I saw him come back downstairs in the dressing room. I think I was the only one there, right, if I remember correctly. I just happened to be sitting down there. It was an understage dressing room. And he came down, he was sitting on the stairs, and he was like, J. Cole, J. Cole, J. Cole. And I remember he looked at me. He was standing on the steps because the stage was at the top, and he said, they really like me. And you know how you see this in shows, you be like, yeah, right. And he was like, no, man, they really fucking with your boy. And I get it, and I know that I was right in what I wanted to do. And even though I didn't manage him, I didn't have nothing to do with his music, to pay for that moment, to see him get it and know I know where I fit. I know I stuck with my gut. I know what I'm here to offer. And for him to be, he was glowing. It was like, you know, like, like some old supernatural shit. And he went back out there and did an encore from some songs from the mixtape. And I remember I was like, yeah, I saw it out of trade. I saw it out of trade. When we did, we was at Atlantic for a while, New York and them came over. We had to do a showcase. I don't think Trey was actually really new at the time. I don't know if I told him that this was kind of like a make it or break it drop type of thing because they were coming in. And uh, he had just started sounding like R. Kelly, you know, doing the, uh, the mixtape stuff, trapped in the closet stuff he did and happy people. And he went and performed. I think we put some of them songs in the showcase or like little snippets or something. It, he sounded like more R. Kelly than he did sound like a lighter version of Trey. And I didn't know he was going to do good. I knew he was a great recording artist. I want to show about this performing. And he got on stage and sang. And I remember he looked at me and everybody, New York, and Julie and uh, Joe LaVert was there. And they were like, oh, God, he's great. Da, da, da. And Trey came off the stage and I hugged him. I was like, man, great job. Like I said, you, you morphed to the next level. And he was like, I want to do it again. And I was like, you want to perform again? You should be good. He was like, I want to do it again. I was like, hey, guys, you want to do it again? He was like, well, do it again, man. And you just knew he knew what, how, you know, what to do from that point. He knew, like, he, I knew he knew that he can compete with, you know, what he wanted to do. And that was great to see. Most challenging part? Most challenging, man, is um, balancing artists ideas in their guts with your experience and what you kind of got a notion of, of experience of what is right and how to do it. And it's harder now for a &Rs and managers and record execs because with the internet, once again, somebody can put up a video and because they got 20,000 views, uh, they'll say, I'm right. The people said I'm right. And I'm like, no, you got 20,000 views. They might like you. I mean, is that's the case? And I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like this guy. I was like, okay, then Ice JJ Fish is, you know what I mean? He's Hova. He's the new Jay-Z. If that's the case, if we're going by numbers, you know what I mean, on the internet. So you have to kind of balance, once again, it's that time and impatience thing. How long can you, how fast and how patiently you can develop that artist to the point where the internet consumes their mind as far as where they should be or where they feel like they need to be. And sometimes it's good for artists and it's bad because sometimes they take the internet pressure of what somebody's liking on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, social networking, and then they think that, no, the label just holding me back. You know, and I'm like, dude, it's really not that good. It's okay. You know what I mean? But I know you can do better when we'll be so far beyond the competition. So you got to kind of balance whatever. And for artists, it got to be hard because... You want these social networking. You're not exactly ready. You've been in the studio for two years or whatever you've been doing. You think you should be John Blaze and everybody. You can just see it. Go to somebody's artist page. Like, where you at? They holding you back, son. What's going on? You know, da, 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 da. You, you this, you the next this and that. And, 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 you know, that is a difficult part. Balancing that and how long you can hold it off to get the job done.
And I think that's why we're at a place where you have all these artists with singles and little doing club runs. And then our superstars have become it. It's a bigger disparity between the superstars and the bottom level because the superstars have been developed properly. So they can have an OK album and still come back and survive because they tour and you know their quality level. But if you're a new artist and then and, and, and that's Wild Wild West and all these records are coming out and you had a hit record and you toured for a year and you come back and no one's playing your next single. All of a sudden, you know what I mean? You might have came out too early. You might have wasn't ready for that success of that single. You might have needed to kind of grill, you know, build slowly in order to be ready for what was about to happen. You know what I mean? So that that's pretty much that, I guess.